So today, I think is a two pub day. Yeah. So, minimum. Yeah. So, I'm trying to get one midday and one mid arbor. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be fussy because there are a lot of pubs. We've just driven past two, excluding town. So, we've left town, what, five minutes ago? Yeah. And we've driven past a sign for two. So, we're going to need to be discerning, although it is only 8.58. So, um, we're not quite ready, <laughs> but like is it? But that, if this is anything to go by, let's be fussy. Alrighty, cool little farm store. Here we go. Green Creek Dairy. We don't need any cheese, but also nice watercress. That could go nice little sun. E shoots. Asian veg. Mini cabbages. Oh, the garlic's all dead, unfortunately. Look at that. Beautiful cheese. Truffle brie. Oh, honey. I'll take bank on bricks. Oh, classic. Dry goods inside. We've got potatoes, tomatoes. Leeks. Lettuces. Cauliflower. I think it's lettuce eye. Lettuce eye. <laughs> Let eye. <laughs> Locally made soap. Look at them go. Look at them go. It's annoying because I actually don't need any of this. <laughs> I kind of might, might need this tiger balm for my sore neck. That's about it. Um, I need garlic, but that's all buggered. And I need like a zucchini or something. So, cool little store. We just don't happen to need anything from it. Oh, we'll get something. That else. fennel looks nice, but. Mm. What are these? What is that? No idea. I just don't know what that is. I want it, but I don't know what it is. Oh, turn the camera off so I can steal all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, you're in the wrong bit. Come on, Houdini. You're a jumper. How are you trying? Sheep. He'll figure it out. Push him around, hopefully there's a gate up there. Yeah. I, I want to get him through the gate. Well, did he even escape from this thing? I don't know. Let's go for a jump. Moves a bit, doesn't he? Yeah, he's going alright. Come on, old mate. He jumped through, but he got like four. He was by here. Oh, he's twisted through it. Yeah, yeah. That's shit. He went, he went over? Yeah. He didn't pick a great spot to jump. There you go, mate. You're out now. He's up. Uh, Door. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's alright. Oh, look at that. He's up. I was like, I saw him jump through and I was like, oh, he got through. Yeah. And I was like, didn't see him run out the other side. Nah. Sheep are so dumb. All right. On we go. So at the Cape, I had this issue where my stereo kept turning off and I couldn't figure out what it was. And then I cleaned the battery terminals because I actually was having trouble starting it and it fixed everything so i'm going to quickly pop the bonnet clean the battery terminals and see if that sorts it out they are pretty dirty yeah let's give this a clean and a tighten yeah it's filthy just gonna scrape everything off it's better that's pretty good well, the fixes seem to work, so stereo still works, nothing's turning off, so that's good. It was a bit dirty, it was a little bit dust dusty, so that's good. What do you reckon, east coast or west coast, mate, so far? Um, different things, obviously. I'm just saying, as we're driving through here, it reminds me a little bit of WA, and I just, I like the look of it. Yeah, um, same, it's, it's quite familiar. Yeah. I think for camping, west coast is better. And yeah. I think for touring, the east coast is better. There's a lot more to see, so like, you know, we're 
three hours in and we've seen more than we saw in like three days in the West Coast. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's just completely different. Like, this is, you know, oh great, if you want to go somewhere for lunch each day and, and tour around and, and see a bunch of cool stuff, it's really good. Um, but if you want to go remote, do some more off-roading, that kind of thing, like we haven't seen any real off-roading here. I'm sure there is, but we haven't haven't come across it. I think I think as a place to travel, I prefer the East Coast. As a place to camp, I prefer the West Coast. I think it's called Triabuna? Tri tri Triabuna? Tri Tribuna? Tribuna? I don't know. Anyway, this little place, lovely little town. We are gonna just have a little drive around, see what's here, and if there is somewhere that looks good for a ooh, waterfront maybe. Now the problem. Now when you're looking for a place to go and have a something to eat or something to drink, you always go to the place with the worst view because the ones with the best view don't have to try it with their food or drink or service. They're like, well. You know, where else are you going to go? No one's prettier than this, so you got to go somewhere with a shit view. So I'm not doing that right now. I'm going against my own rule, but I just kind of want to have a look down here. Also, I like looking at boats, so boats I can't afford particularly, which is all boats. <laughs> especially. Yeah, they're beautiful. It's too early and they don't do lunch, so it's fine. Worth a look. Just a beautiful day and a nice area. It's definitely a nicer drive. Everywhere we've gone on the East Coast. Oh, Tasmania Parks and Wildlife Service. <laughs> yeah, mate. My favourites. So, I haven't actually told this story yet, but for me to come to Tasmania, I had to spend two and a half thousand dollars on public liability insurance. I have to have twenty million dollars of cover. I had to spend four hundred and forty dollars on a part on a filming permit to film basically anywhere that wasn't private property. So I filmed all over Australia, every state. Nothing is as expensive as this. Now Parks and Wildlife Service, everyone I dealt with there was lovely. They were really helpful. They did get my application through as quickly as possible, but the system is not designed for YouTube. It's not designed for people like me. I was this close to canceling this trip because I didn't think I'd get the permits. And in fact, I only got the permits four hours before I was able to cancel my trip if I needed to, which would have been 48 hours before I left. It was insane. I mean, I was about to get on the plane um, when I finally got the permit. So um, yeah, it's just so much screwing around. They also wanted a full itinerary and things like that, which obviously couldn't give them, as you can see, we're winging it. I would love to see some change in that. I really would. So Spiky Bridge, um, just trying to figure out how they got the name. Oh yep, yep, we'll check that. Yep. All right, long setup review. We're going to review our camping setup. Okay. So we'll start with cooking setup. Cooking setup. So as in like ease of getting ready to go to cook. I I reckon it's out of ten. If the if the camper trailer is basically a ten because it's like a proper kitchen. Sure. My I'd give my Prado something like a like a seven. On its own. Yeah, okay. I'd probably give this a five. Right. It, it, and the thing I'm, I miss the most is no drawer. No drawer. Get, having to bug around with boxes. Everything's a lot more manual. You just got to push, start where it's yeah. pull everything in, and push the where pull everything out. Maybe a six, because it does work quite well. well I think but, by the end of the week, it's gotten a lot quicker getting in and out, as it always does. Yeah, comes. but with one person, I find it a bit of a wrestle. Actually, sure. I'm, no, I'm going to go back to a five. It's a bit of a wrestle. Uh huh. Um, I'd love a drawer. Yeah, uh, I, well, I think the other factor in it is assuming that the fire pit is part of the cooking setup. Yeah. 
then I think the setup and dismantle of that is a bit more of a stop around that the square foldable looks. Yep, I agree with that. But for nice. me, but for me, cooking on it is so much nicer. Yeah. So. 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 For, but, around about. Yeah, for me, the the fire pit works out a better rig, and that's the other, the other thing is I can move I can move the fire on one side and stuff like that. You yeah. cannot do that in the other one. So for cooking. Like on that fire pit, I give the I give that as a fire pit goes, I give that a ten. Yeah. For cooking. Okay. But the setup is longer, so overall I'd give the I'd give the fire pit like an eight and a half. Yeah. Okay. For me, but, okay. but I understand for you if, if you if but it, as a as a heat source, the little square folding ones are better. Yeah. Oops. So what 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 would you give the sort of overall like cooking, you know, cleaning setup? Um, uh, I reckon you're being a bit harsh with the five. I'd go a six. Okay, cool. All right, comfort for sitting and sleeping. If you give your setup a review, okay, I'll give okay. my setup a review. All right, I'll go the swag and the stretcher first. The swag's old, that's fine. Mattress in it's pretty terrible. It's your most basic 50 mil single yeah. mattress, but it's- And it's probably 10, seven, 10 years old. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, seven to 10 years old. Um, but the stretcher really mitigated that quite well. Um, so that, that definitely, uh, worked it up a bit. But you got a longer setup time. Yeah, slightly. I reckon your sleeping setup is sub five minutes. Yeah, oh definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, probably three and a half minutes, that sort of thing. Five if I'm pissed. Five if you're pissed, yeah. yeah, that's it. If your 10 is like, you're a real luxurious RV setup with a full yeah. on bed and air conditioning and all that. Yeah. I reckon about like a seven. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty I, happy with it. I think I'm probably a seven as well. I'm probably an eight. No, I'm a seven. What about access into this thing? I haven't actually gotten the bed. That's that's exactly like it's comfy. It's totally secure. It's got actually reasonable ventilation. I can crack the windows. It's perfect temperature. It's completely weatherproof. But getting in and out is a pain in the ass. So when I want to get out and have a leak in the in the night, that's really annoying. Or just climbing into it. But you know, it's only it's only once a night. So it's like yeah, it's not really that much of an issue. Well, it depends off your piss. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd give it a seven. Um, yeah, like my camper trailer would be like an eight and a half, I reckon, maybe yeah. a nine. And then chairs? Chairs, real good. Um, as far as camp chairs go, I'm going to give them a nine. The nine the, and a half. I, I'm going like a nine because they need a proper cup holder. Yep, nine. Yeah. Nine. Uh, or two cup holders. They are. The, I reckon they're the comfiest camp chair that I've come across. Um, well, they do all the basics of right size, good support, and the back support. Yeah, lumbar support is crucial for me. And then the other thing is um, the, heater, the heater packs. Yeah. I would like them to last longer, obviously, because, you know, like if you're being fussy. But it maybe so, it's an eight and a half then, because where our one thing was, if you, if you could do it with a battery powered solution. That would be so longer. sick, yeah. yeah. Um, but like shape and everything, yeah. perfect. So yeah, um, overall for the price, I think it's been really good. I wouldn't, I really, I mean, I've had the opportunity to change everything, and I, I haven't. So, um, yeah, if I like, this is it's not it's not the full on, you know, DIY absolutely budget um, setup, um, but it is I think bang for your buck, very good. Yeah, yeah. Now we've hinted at it, but there is going to be a 2.0 build on this thing, so keep your eyes peeled for that. That's going to come out in a few months, um, and. Yeah, the deli's getting a birthday. The only other thing we didn't mention, actually, power. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the power solution on this has been very good. So we've got a, a Klarman battery box um, with an amp, 100 amp hour lithium battery. We checked this morning, we, would put, we pulled in about two yesterday, um, put everything on charge, around the fridge, you know, all that kind of stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, and woke up this morning, and at eight o'clock, um, it had 86% left. So, you know, it's it's pretty bulletproof. It's got a good little inverter to charge things, all that kind of stuff. And so the power, it's, it's never been a stress. You can run the electric blankets off it. You can run whatever you want off it. It's really not a, not a, um, not a concern. So it's been right. perving on this 60 series. It's got this HF, it's got everything. Switch, 12 HT. Oh, firewood in the back. Gaz and Stace's adventures. Go follow them. Good on you, Gaz. Look at this bloody view.
What's that? That's a distillery. I think I'm oh, a good distillery. God. That's the lobster shack. Isn't That's terrible. the This is. Yep. Well, let's go lobster shack. Fish, I know you're doing all right. Fish, I know you're doing very well. Cheers. Well, the lobster shack was fish and chips. I don't think it's good fish and chips. Yeah, it was decent. There was nothing to write home about, but it was it hit the spot. Amazing views. That's the thing. To your earlier point. And to my earlier point, not trying that hard. So yeah, um, that was. That was a good view with food. And go and find a caravan park. It's a cheat. Well, it's not, not find a caravan park. There's only one the entrance to Fresno. So we'll go to that. Or as long says, Fresno for some reason. So come to Fresno Campground. We're going to go and check in and uh, find ourselves a campsite. Why not be a first? Now, campground, there's one dude way down there with a the swag. And other than that, it's just, it's just us. So long, thoughts on the stretcher? First time swag stretcher camping. Setup's qu quite easy and it's actually more robust than I thought. Yeah. Pack away took a minute to figure it out. This, well, two times to figure it out, but yeah, real good. I read them. Yeah. Like I think, would recommend in wet weather. Recommend in wet weather. Recommend like if you don't want to go for an inflatable. Uh, like the inflatable does everything this does. Yeah. If you're happy to be on the ground. Yep. Which I've already got. Yep. But like, yeah, um, it definitely adds comfort and uh, we haven't had a stupid cold night, so I don't know. I've, the only other thing I've heard is that maybe you get a bit cold underneath, but I haven't noticed that at all. Yeah. Actually, $25 electric blanket off COVID. Yeah, yeah. So the one thing I'd, I'd note is I've got an inflatable as well in my swag, but there's something that the inflatable cannot do, and that is get you off the ground. Yeah. Because when it's pissing with rain and there's water running underneath you, you feel so good in a stretcher. On Zuma Falls. Seven years ago, my swag got flooded. Yep, and this was not... why we got this. Yeah, that's exactly why we got this. Yeah, stretch has been good. I recommend them. Uh, I just don't use them that much because I um, have a camper trailer. All right, we're going to go out for a shower in a minute, but um, I'm going to stay down here, finish my beer, and then uh, Long is going to go up. Now, these awnings are easy to take down, but one of the best things about him is that you don't have to take him down. <laughs> so, see you mate. That's where he's going, up to the reception. <laughs> it looks so funny. All right, we just had a quick shower, which is pretty bloody lovely. It's $2 for two minutes, so that's, that's all we need. This is Maggie. Say hello, Maggie. Hello. This is like the tour of Tazzy's dogs. Maggie is lovely. Hey? Very vicious. Vicious. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put a muzzle on you. Otherwise, you'll lick someone to death. So, just watching the sun go down. Quite a nice spot. Great spot. Just on the edge of what? Fresno. Fresno National Park. The advantage of this is that you can have a fire, you can have a dog, you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you, I think it's one kilometre to the National Park. Yum. That's it. That's it. Well done.
Yeah, well done, well done, medium, well, 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 fucking done, me. <laughs> Double well, please. That is, um, I think the correct terminology is perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think I think that's that's the correct term. Is the morning and slept very well uh, still only one other person in the campsite he didn't make a peep we did <laughs> we were up we just sat around and chatted for a bit I've lost my voice great um, so we're gonna go and have a look at Freshno this morning I think we'll what do you think go and do our morning ablutions at, at camp and then um yeah and then head down to Freshno should be nice Long's never been there I've been there once. Just quickly checking if I actually need to buy a permit because I don't know because like I don't know if I need a permit because I spent all the money on the filming permit so I don't know if I need to actually pay for access. I shouldn't do but I might. 45 bucks to go in. Earning a pub lunch today mate? Yeah. We're at the pub at the end of the wall. Yeah. 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 That's where we're going now. We're so unfit. Better not just be a bloody beach or something. <laughs> Pretty nice. It's uh, yeah, definitely worth the walk up. It's worth the walk up. There's no sure. pub, but there's no pub. Pretty good view, fortunately. Oh, good start to the day. Get it. roll the legs over. But I, quit. I'm got a bit of a cough because I have a toddler who goes to daycare, so I always have a cough. Nothing to um, do with all the smoke and alcohol and food. Nah, and... nah. Blame the toddler. So windy today. We absolutely dodged a bullet. With um, not we're not camping today because it's just hectic, hectic wind, gale force. But kind of a cool thing to see from like outside, from inside the car. It is blowing the car out a little bit. Though. This is beautiful. So we were going to go to Bay of Fires, but it's like gale force winds. I don't really want to go to the beach and see some red rocks in gale force winds. I've seen Bay of Fires, it's beautiful, I do recommend it if you're driving past, but um, what lunch? We're going to go and get some lunch. Um, we've done it before, it's an hour out of the way from where we are because we want to go in the exact opposite direction, so all good. Um, I've seen a lot of beaches and things that has dribbled off. Yeah, look, we're from WA, we've got beautiful beaches. You go there, you're like, oh cool, red rocks. Sweet. Like, don't get me wrong, it's nice, it's a very nice place, but we're not going to go massively out of our way to see it. So, I did read that it was good. Yeah. yeah just time wise, it makes sense. So, I just got a call from mate, um, Andrew Sepia White, from the Forex Overland, and he's got a new podcast, um, The Next Journey, and he's asked me to come on. He's also got Ron Parsons on. So, this, I'd say that episode will be probably be out by now. I'll put it on the screen if it is or isn't. We're going to discuss Tasmania and the Parks and Wildlife Service and the permits and all that kind of stuff because he's actually just cancelled his trip to get to Tassie because of all the rigmarole he has to go through. So good to know and I think that'll be a very interesting conversation so I'll put a link to that down below if it's if it's up. Can some Taswegians please inform us what does the no spray zone thing mean? We've seen these little signs that say start no spray zone and then end no spray zone and we don't know what that means. We don't have that in WA. Um, so yeah, I'd like to know. Put in the comments. Thank you. Just noticed this farmer has the same kind of dog as me. Well, I didn't know Fred was Taswegian. Oh, yeah, one of Fred. Oh, there we go. More, more Freds. Oh, that's weird. Oh, they're they're not funny. Funny. So we've come to the pub with the paddock. Uh, where they have these pigs who absolutely love a beer. So you can go and buy a beer 
It's like a gold coin donation to a charity. They give you a special pig beer, which is just normal beer, a little diluted. And uh, mate, I've never seen an animal nail something so fast. It's like my dog with a steak. This is a very cool pub. Yeah. I'm very, very happy with this one. <laughs> what about the other fella? Not quite my friend. Huh? Shit. I'm just pouring beer on pigs now. Uh, this right. boy. You're not getting any, the other <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. So we just went to the um, pub in the paddock. I think that was our best pub in Tassie. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, yeah. It had the most character. The food was decent, it was fine. Good beer. beer was good. They had a pig. They had a pig who loved beer. Um, it looked amazing. But the, just the good. vibe of the place, the fireplace. The chairs at the bar were killer. Two fireplaces. Two fireplaces, warm. Really, really, really nice bartender. Old. It was old from 1880. Yeah. It just, it ticked every box that I look for in a country pub. It reminded me of Dargo um, in the high country, which is a bloody great pub. So yeah, no, very, very, very impressed. Um, well done, well done. That's how he did it. Yeah, and now we're just driving out and it's bloody windy as we've said before. Um, it's actually very nice looking at all the wind from inside the nice warm pub next to a fire. And I'm kind of amazed it hasn't happened already, but a tree did fall in front of us. So um, it was on some sort of a tree farmy thing. I, I don't know what the deal was exactly, but uh, it was blocking both lanes. So I just whipped out the electric saw and um, got that out of the way so that people didn't run into it. There's so many laws about chainsaws in Tassie. I'm pretty sure I didn't break any because I wasn't collecting firewood, which is the big thing, and all I was, I was doing was clearing a hazard. So I'm pretty sure that's fine. But well, who knows? I might get fined up the ass. <laughs> now we are going to go to our accommodation um, and have a shower and then go and get all, all stingy. Looking forward to it. So there's a little bit of a walk in, takes about 10 minutes, and you end up on the shore of. Lake Derby, and there it is, that's the sauna house. That should be good. It's chilly today, which is perfect. So this is the sauna house. It's pretty windy, it's very cold. And I know that we're going to have to jump in there later. I've been told the trick is to get really hot first and then jump in, not jump in, then get hot. So we'll do that. It's probably going to be about, about 10 minutes, but I'm doing it. Alright, no, I'm gonna jump in. Yeah, I'm gonna stoke it. Oh, oh, it's so nice outside. Oh. oh it's cold. The wind is just nice. Oh. Oh. Chum. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's cold. Oh, how is it long? I need water. Oh. It's good. Good? It's good. I'm going to jump all the way in there. Oh. Weird. <laughs> Like the, the no, no, it's just so you get out. Yeah. Yeah. I just like, even, oh. isn't feeling temperature. I can't feel anything. I couldn't feel the winds. I can't feel the heat in here. No. That's very strange. That's so strange. I'm like, my back is cold. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's what an experience. <laughs> what do you reckon, Long? Really good. Highly recommend. Highly recommend that. And the trick is, we found out, we only found this out later in the piece, but 
stay in the water for as long as you can until it stops hurting. Yeah. So, in two minutes. Two minutes in the water and it's cold. Shit. Uh, it sucks. It's so shit doing it. But do that, then you get in the sauna and it's like this euphoria. So it's 45 bucks to do it and I, I would do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. All right, that is the end of our Tassie trip. Um, so don't worry, we're not driving. We're just filming this in the car because it is extra extraordinarily windy outside. Cheers, mate. Cheers. So overall, weather has been amazing. Yeah, ridiculously like, good. Like, I've been to Tassie three times. This is the best weather we've ever had. The campsites, I would say number one for me was Thousand Dollar Hut. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But like both of the two with Tim were the oh, two best. They're, they're, the two, ones, they're like, the two best campsites we did in Tassie, for sure. Um, that makes sense when you're with a local. That's it. West Coast, better for camping. East Coast is more interactive and there's more stuff to do. So for, tr for us trying to do a lap quite quickly and not sit down in one place for too long, the East Coast has definitely been more interactive. Yeah. I want your favourite um, favourite day. Ah, uh, shit, that's hard. For me, it was Thousand Dollar Track Day. That's hard, but I love that drive through Derwent River and that sort of stuff. It was Derwent Bridge. Derwent Bridge, sorry. Yeah, yeah. There you go. We've never said what you said. <laughs> um, like actually, yesterday was real good. We got to what do we got? Three different pubs. Actually, yeah, yesterday was really good. Like it was less camping, but like then the Airbnb was real nice. It was a good kind of wind down day. Yeah. I'll probably go yesterday actually because I'm I'm big in, I like camping, I like four wheel driving, but I also love the traveling around touring aspect of it. Yeah. We got a, what I call it, a very interesting pub uh, to yeah. start off with, which kind of. There's a certain pub in Derby that has a very interesting owner. And then with pizza in the hub oh, in Derby, such which was pizza. great. And then the Airbnb was real nice. Now, favorite meal of the trip. So we had um, Philly cheesesteak. Then we had pork crackling. Pork crackling. Then we had um, the crayfish. crayfish. Then we had the steak, um, oh. steak platter. I think it's. I'm going to call it a tie between the first two, the Philly cheesesteak and the crayfish. So, I oh, sorry, the pork crackling. I mean, I'm actually exactly the same. Yeah, I think maybe the pork crackling yeah. slightly, slightly tipped it for me. Yeah, I mean, like overall. It's been a hectic trip. It's we've done so much. We've yeah. done a lap of Tassie in six days. I kind of felt like a, a lot of the time we're kind of missing things because we we were doing it very ad hoc. But at the same time, it's good because we're finding things. Yeah. If you had made like a, you could make a real strict itinerary and mm -hmm. probably hit some. We probably missed some big thing. Yeah. Somewhere. Oh, I mean, we could do this over a month. Though, but right? I don't feel like a bad about it really because. And someone will probably say, oh, why didn't oh, you do you this, thing? this thing? And, and that's why, tell it, let us know what we missed. Yeah, and yeah, we'll come yeah. back and we'll do it again. <laughs> yeah, in a yeah, different car. Excuse. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, it's not my, not my last time in Tassie. But maybe the highlight of the trip, it was this morning and the sauna. Um, oh, I, the sauna I, was I, I, so... Uh, Lake I, Derby. I think the best activity we did the yeah. whole time was the sauna. And I, like, I put that up there with like seeing, like the pub, I think pub in the paddock and um, Der Derwin Bridge pub were like the two highlights uh, and the shack. But then up there with all of those is the sauna. The sauna was unreal. I feel still feel so good after yeah. that. Like, I'm a new man. All right, cheers, mate. Cheers. It's bloody good to have you. Tell you what, Thanks. having a mate along on a trip, I usually do those ones alone. It is dramatically better. Dramatic. I haven't washed up once. Not once. I have not washed. Oh. And he hasn't cooked once. It's no, perfect. No. This, we're playing to our strengths. Thank yeah. you so much for watching. I'm going to go and get on the ferry and bugger off back to the mainland. And um, yeah, this has been really good fun and I'm yeah. very much looking forward to showing you guys uh, what we do next with Dennis. And as, on, as an outro, I'm gonna play some of the highlights of driving this piece of shit van, which has actually turned out to be quite a good van, from the northernmost to the southernmost point of Australia and having a bloody good time doing it. Good luck with editing all this shit. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I think it helped. Yeah.